Hi everyone, welcome back to In the Ring. Sorry, I was looking at Josh because I didn't know if he actually started it or not. Yeah, no, we're good. We're we're back in action. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, today, obviously again, UC Sick is not here. So Carly and I decided that during this season, obviously a lot of get-togethers, a lot of sicknesses and illnesses and all of these things. Um, and we just decided it would be better to have sick not come for a little while until, you know, maybe this season has passed. And we're not saying that we can't get sick at any other point of the year, but we just wanted to... RSV season. Yeah, RSV season especially is kind of where we're... Cold and flu season, RSV season. Yeah. Um, And unfortunately, you're contagious before you even have symptoms, so I just... It's just safer... Yeah, if we don't, it's and it's just not, I, and I, it sucks because we, he brings a whole different vibe, and we definitely miss him. Yeah, We're we love seeing sick. him every single week. Yeah, we love sick. We literally went from seeing him every week mm-hmm. to we took whatever it was a year or two off, whatever it was. Yeah, and then again seeing him every week, and now we're we haven't seen yeah. him in like over a month and a half. I Has think, it been that no? Yeah, before Nick, Nick was the last one. It was sick. Has it already been a month and a yeah, half? Yeah, he came in October before Halloween. That's crazy. Time yeah. is uh, very fast. Yeah. Uh, wow. Um, but yeah, so we're sorry. I know sick brings like a totally good vibe. And trust me, this sucks doing it without him because he brings topics. He's funny. It breaks ice. Me and Josh talk to each other all day. We don't want to talk to each other anymore, you know? so oh okay that's good to know <laughs> perfect yeah i guess we don't guys who knew you actually would think that we argue more than we do considering we're around each other 24 7 but the only reason why we don't argue is because he doesn't give in to my arguments no she tries though oh yeah you i try, try to bait me into him oh yeah all the time but i just uh you know what's funny yesterday i texted you oh i said i want it it's so funny i texted you yesterday night and i was like i want diet pepsi for some reason i was craving like a freezing cold diet pepsi with like a like a nice fresh lime in it okay mm. and i just wanted to like just be disgusting and just drink so much of it and then immediately after i was gonna say i'm sorry that i'm fat i love you <laughs> and i really let myself go but i was like you literally make fun of me because like i'll say one thing so random i'm like oh i want pizza and then you'll be like okay and then get some i'm like i'm sorry that i'm fat you're like what are you talking like what are you talking <laughs> did about? i just call you out for that yes and yeah. that's why i didn't do it last night and it's funny because i went to go text it to you and i deleted it because i'm like okay carly like get real that is so funny i literally just called you out for that yeah i use literally all the time now no you know what you you really use is basically oh so basically, no 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 i thought it was essentially is it basically or essentially both. which one i you think i interchanged them yeah i think it makes me sound more sophisticated no it than makes you sound am. annoying oh because did we tell them about the one time we went to the bank i don't know I don't so think me so. and josh noticed like we'll like <laughs> when we're around like a salesperson they always have like this word or this thing that they do over and over again like the girl that did the cpap she would not stop giggling <laughs> oh my gosh i forgot about that carly okay wait a minute let's t- i feel that because she's so sweet time out <laughs> I went and got a CPAP machine a little while ago. Don't use it at all. I want to preface something. I have very mild sleep apnea. Oh, get on with Okay. It. And I've lost weight since then. But do I still snore? Yes, sometimes. Okay, awesome. So anyway, we went to this, this to get the CPAP machine programmed. And this girl was there and she was helping us out. And Carly was with me. And it was like after everything she said, she did the... Can you do she it? Go, <laughs> after every <laughs> like, single... So yeah, do this. <laughs> yeah it was pretty crazy and i felt bad i felt bad too because she was really good and she was really sweet it was just she's good at her job and she I was, was really pregnant nice and too and i had to act like i was laughing so hard i was crying yeah literally in literally i was about to say it again she was cr- she was actually crying tears in the <laughs> office and we were trying to like Sugarcoat Obvi- it. Oh, yeah, obviously not make her feel, feel uncomfortable. Yeah, and whatever. And she, she just thought. And I wasn't laughing at her. It was more of like you know when like you look at your friend and you're not supposed to be laughing, so then you laugh. Yeah, that was the worst part. We weren't even. Because I wasn't was even nothing, laugh until there was nothing even like embarrassing about it. It was just like we both noticed it and gave each other a look. And it was, and then we just lost. And it was it. only because 
we noticed it with the guy at the bank too. Oh so then it was then then that's why I think we saw it. We we noticed it again, and we're like, no way. Like so, we went to the bank. We were opening a bank account. I think for was it lavender? Or yeah, Capo? yeah, yeah. I think it was lavender. And we're opening a bank account for her. And every single question or every single thing I said, he went. So yeah, I think you should do it for what it's worth. For what it's worth. Oh yeah, it, so it w- sign this because for what it's worth, yeah, I it mean, w- you might as well. It was so. It random. was probably like a hundred and twenty times he said for what it's Dude, worth. Dude, it was any sentence you could think of. And I did it again. Sentence, I started laughing. I would again. say I would yeah, and we laughed because again we'll look at each other and we'll like make give it, each other a little look and and then we both start laughing and it's the worst. And then thing I have ever. to pretend I think I saw something on Facebook. Oh yeah, you're or like, was oh that someone else. No. No, it was him. I okay. Think. I think you were like, oh, someone just sent me something funny. Ha ha. Because, because I can't contain myself. I laugh so hard. I start crying and then Josh has to. I have to cover it yes. up and be like, what are you doing? Like, you're a weirdo. Like, ba- try, try to Because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. It's really mean. And like, I try not to. I'm not making fun of them, but I am. But for what it's worth, <laughs> it was, uh, it, and it was crazy because it was any, se- think of anything. I any mean, sentence. I do the same thing. I go a lot. I say, I'm a lot. We all have our thing. Yeah. We all have our little. What do you want to call him? Quirk. Quirks, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. He was, again, really nice guy. It's just a filler. It's just a filler phrase. But it was so excessive. Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. And a lot of people have them again, like ums, likes, yeah. basically, essentially. Yeah. And his was just very, very repetitive. And it was, it would be like sentence after sentence. He would say something like, um, You'd ask a question, you'd be like, oh yeah, for what it's worth, I would definitely do that. I think that's a good good investment. Um, and for what it's worth, and it would like back to back. Yes. It was like, crazy. Like three or four times in one run on sentence. It was insane. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. That was random. Yeah. I don't know why we know got why on that topic. Oh, but because anyway. you kept saying literally. Oh yeah. I called myself out. So yeah. Uh, sick. We miss you. Uh, He's not watching. Sick. Actually, that's pretty I bad saw, that our I saw, podcast is so boring. No, I saw a comment. He said, I'm always here. Aww. He said, I'm here. I'm always here. I said, oh, si- oh sicky poo. <laughs> <laughs> we do miss him a lot. Yeah, sick is awesome. And he's and he's like, an, besides the podcast, I mean, he is a friend, but he is like an awesome friend too. So like, yeah, he's just easy to be around. Yeah, he is. He, sick, that's a comment. You are very easy to be around. You're just like, a, you know, those people. Okay, so everybody has these people in their lives. You have, I think I talked about this last podcast. You have like a certain group. You have a certain friend for certain things. There are certain friends that you have that you can talk about certain things with and that you do certain things with. But there's also those friends, I call them small dose friends. Where Oh, I have those. Yeah, you can only handle them in very small doses of time. Yeah. So... I really hope I'm nobody's small dose friend. Oh, me too. That would suck. I probably am. We all probably are. Everybody, everybody always thinks they're the best of the best. But uh, I like the a universal friend who can just yeah everything. And you have the universal friend where they're kind of good for every conversation, and that's generally speaking, that's probably your best friend if you had to chalk it up to it. But anyway, yeah. Um, sick is not that. Sick is not like a small dose guy. He's more of like a universal. Yeah. A universal person to be around. I feel like he's probably that way with a lot of people. Yeah, he has a lot of friends. A lot. Yeah, we have no friends. He's so like, we, mu- oh, we must be an I'm issue. Like, I'm like, he's always doing stuff. I'm like, you are just popular. So we must be the problem. We oh, have, for sure. We have like three friends. Oh, first of all, I have a resting bee face. I'm intimidating. I'm very opinionated. I'm not easy to be around. I'm also like <clears throat> a little weird. What do you mean weird. you're not easy to be around? I'm not. Okay, explain. I just told you. No, say it in detail. Well, I have like an attitude that... I'm just using... I'm. By the way, I'm going to use this later. What the So you're just giving me fuel. I have an attitude that's just like part of my personality. That's just not true. Can come... Wait, what? It's not? No, honey. You have no attitude. Oh, you're joking. Um, (laughs) I have like this attitude, but it, it just comes into my voice and it's not even actual attitude. I don't even know how to describe it. I just have like it sounds like, a bluntness. like, but I'm not even meaning to. And then when you actually see me have attitudes, you're like, oh, damn, that's you're like that. That wasn't even the full thing. And yeah. I, I don't know why I'm like that. I'm just you have know. layers to your attitude. I do, but I, I always have like a lingering attitude, and I don't know why. Because um, I don't mean it. Like, and I feel I like think you. I think you. No, 
I think you have a bluntness in the way you speak about things. I think that's what people think you have an attitude, but you're actually just very blunt. Mm. And and in a world where a lot of people sugarcoat things and a lot of people aren't straight up and they don't like the confrontation and they don't want the awkwardness, Carly doesn't care about any of that. Uh, awkwardness, confrontation, anything in that realm of... But does that make me rude? It doesn't make you rude. It I think makes, sometimes. It, but, it, but it comes off as rude because people don't want that tension and you're just very blunt with things see my thing is like i'd rather just say it like you're not the friend to come to to sugarcoat and make oh, you feel no. better about something oh, no. it's like <laughs> you just Car- sent me I, a I sent her that. i sent her a tiktok and it was like that friend he's i don't know i think his name's like leo Gonzalez. Uh, uh, first of all that guy's hilarious i think he's so funny mm-hmm. and he was i think that's his name and he was um talking about oh that friend that just is never on your side. Is never on your side. And, and Carly is that friend to a T. Yeah. Like, for example, if he, like, Josh has done this a lot. He'll be like, oh, this person did this. And I'm like, yeah, well, think about it from their point of view. Of course they're going to do that. Da 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 da. And then Josh is like, uh, hello, I'm just trying to rant to you, but I'm not that friend. Yeah. No, I'm gonna you're not. tell you how it is straight up. And then, like, unless. Like, if you're looking for, a, if you're looking for, like, an emotional emotional supportive like oh just get me through this time for example if you were going through a breakup and you're like well we broke up because blah 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 carly would be like well that can't be the full story like what did you do but (laughs) but you need self-awareness i don't think it's a bad thing but i that's why you're saying do people or do i have an attitude or do people not like it whatever i'm just telling you that most people don't it's it's great to have somebody like that in your life because it keeps you grounded and it keeps you self aware mm-hmm. and it and it holds you accountable. But at the same time, a lot of people don't want to be held accountable, which is their own problem. I think that's a that's a you thing to say. It's their own problem. It's true. Uh, a lot of people don't like that and it's uncomfortable, so they would just rather have somebody sugarcoat it for them and make them feel good about what they're doing versus actually telling them the truth. You're really, the truth. That really sucks friend. that you married someone like that. You're going to deal with that your whole no, life. No, no, it doesn't because here's why. A lot of times in life, no matter how accountable or self-aware you are, there's always going to be a lapse in something oh, of course. that you've done or you're doing or you're trying to do. And there's some things you just really don't notice, whether you think you do or not. There's things you do you don't notice. Even though you're the self-aware truth Oh no, 100%. Friend, there are things that you'll do and you're like, oh, I do that. Oh, I didn't even realize. Yeah. And so it's good to have those people because then then you can correct. If you were talking like just being rude and it really wasn't an issue and you're just trying to make something an issue, then okay. But the things you say, I don't want to gas you up too much, but the things you say, typically, typically they're relevant and they're correct. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Don't take that too far. I'm talking about in this context. I'm clipping that and every time that you tell me I'm wrong, I'm playing that. I'm talking about in this context because there are things that I've done or do or and I'm like, hey, why why can't I do this or why can't I do that? And Carly's like, well, it's because this. I'm like, oh, okay. And then you work on- Hey, I give you tough love. Exactly. And people need tough love. I think, personally, I think tough love works better than that soft stuff in my opinion well yeah i I do reverse psychology on you all the time yeah she does and it's worked but you're lucky that um, i mean you're not lucky i'm lucky that i'm the type of person that even though it's tough love that i don't yes i don't get pushed away yes yes because that's why carly's a a special type of woman she'll give you the tough (gasps) love you'd be a good like if you cared about it and you were more social with people like Mm -hmm. a good coach really yeah like a good coach like a if you were into sports or something, like mm-hmm. a lot of football coaches or basketball coaches, they tell you how it is. They give you the tough love because they want you to get better. <clears throat> Versus some people, they give you tough. They give you a trophy for just participating? Yeah. Ex- like no. they're just like giving you. Yeah. You would be not like, you're not getting a participation trophy. Oh, no. Like you sucked. Yeah. That's it. Sorry. Point yeah. blank. The only person I enough. probably could never do that to is Lavender. Exactly. Well, it's called a biased <laughs> tough love. It's a bias. I'm going to give her a trophy for just waking up in the morning. Good you. <laughs> you. Um, no, but it it helps for me anyway. I think it helps me to to grow and to oh, and it does seriously. And and then it helps me to just identify things that actual I actually need to fix, but not that I need to fix for no reason. That I need to fix to grow and to get better as a person. And 
it carries through other yes it does realms yeah it does for sure it does like literally doing one thing affects you in so many other aspects of your life sometimes people don't even notice like just having one habit of like working out in the morning can just follow through with so many other habits yeah i agree i think as i haven't worked out in three months no but it's yeah (laughs) me too um no, it, it's, but it, it is good. I think everybody should have a friend like this. Um, and I'm sure just talking about this, people are thinking of that one person in their mm-hmm. life, life that is like that. But it's funny because before you, I had never encountered, I never had a friend that was like that. Well, I don't think I was, I, was act, I felt I like I was like the friend like, friend, no, but friend. I, I felt like I was the friend that was like that. I felt like I was the friend that was you know, I would I wouldn't try to sugarcoat something, but I was around a lot of like all my friends are guys, so it was yeah. dif- it's a different conversation. I think mm, don't take that offensively. I just think it's a well. I don't talk. I don't act like this <clears throat> with my friends. You're my husband, so it's different. That's true. Like I, I don't guess. Yeah, talk to true. my friends. I mean, if they wanted it, actually, that's not true. I feel like I you would. Did. I do. Some I f- of them. I feel like you have to certain friends, like Olivia. I could tell her how it is. Yeah, I f- but I feel like you do it in. There's always going to be a specific. See. This is the thing, though, is a lot of people who might be like you, uh, they they might not care how it's delivered. At least you're. I don't know. You're conscious gassing enough. Me up a lot. No, no, I, I feel like you're conscious enough to 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 know about your delivery and like, hey, was that rude? And be like, oh, maybe it wasn't. Like you're gonna deliver certain things to certain people a certain way. That's true, obviously. Yeah. Like with me, you can just be blunt and <laughs> as rude as you want, and I'm just gonna take it. Oh, really? No, I'm just kidding. Give it a rest. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Give it I'm a just rest. kidding. No. I am a very hard person, though, to be friends with and to marry. Why do you think that? Like, what? What is your why? Because of that? I think. Again, I don't think maybe so much now, but I feel like a lot of the growing up, I was very intimidating to men and to women and to everyone. Why? Um. Well, one, I look. I look like I, well, I used to look like I'd be like super high maintenance and rude and like okay. bougie. So you think it was the the perspective of your looks versus Th- actually knowing you? And then also I obviously was a lot more popular back then, like online. So people obviously was intimidated by that. So they'd feel insecure about themselves, which wasn't my issue, but it's their issue. And that's me saying that is another problem. <laughs> No, I mean, again, um, there's always going to be some sort of validity, even if it doesn't, even that, even if th- what you're saying doesn't apply to everybody that's yeah. ever hated on you, it's going to apply to some people. Um, and I mean, I can't really speak on the whole, like, it's hard to marry me because I've never married myself, but I'm around myself and I don't think I could marry someone like me. <laughs> Fair. I feel like, well, that I think that's in, in in some regard, like you and I agree, this is like a self-accountability uh, session. This is yeah. just going to be titled therapy session with Carly and Josh yes. on In the Ring. Boom. There you go. Um, also, I want to I wanna say we had no ideas coming in. No. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you guys. We're like, let's just turn the cameras on. And, it always got, uh, happens yeah, that way. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because they say, like, Carly and I agree on a lot of stuff. We agree on most things when it comes to, like, morality, um, religion, pol- politics, things of that nature. But I feel like you still need, when they say opposites attract, you still need an opposite personality. Uh, even if you line up with everything else, I feel like it's it's... You either you're gonna be different in one realm or another realm, and I think we're very similar in a, a lot of realms. And but I think the personality realm is where you and I differ, and I think that's why it works. Because if I was like you, or you were like me, it would just be um, a weird dynamic, and I don't think anything would get done. But like I don't understand. Like what's opposite about us? Mm. You can't even think of anything. Well, if you're saying, well, no, you need to, you need to come up with it because you're the one who said I couldn't marry me. So why am I different than you? Because I have an attitude. You don't have an attitude. Okay, there you ever. go. Number one. Um, I'm stubborn. You're not. Yep. So okay. So so what else? What else do you think? So attitude, stubborn. What else do you think would be like a 
a difference between us and, and personality. I hate talking to people, which is weird because it's my actual job. Yeah, Carly's so weird. It it's so <laughs> ironic because you know you've you've entertained in you've entertained millions of people, but in the same regard, it's like it's just you and a camera. So yeah. it's not like you were like on tour and and right. entertaining a whole crowd of people. I used to not be like that though. Well, you've definitely I've, become more I've always hated calling people on the phone. Don't know why. You've definitely become. I mean, even in the last three years, I feel like you've been a lot more introverted, as have I. I'm very much, I've changed, I feel like we've both kind of really settled down in terms of like being extroverted and like happy-go-lucky, oh, let's go here, here, here. We're like, no, let's just stay home and do nothing. That is true. But you are weird with phone calls. She can't call her doctor. She can't call. A lot of people are like that. A lot of women are like that. Comment down below if you hate phone calls and you make your husband do it for you. Or spouse. Hello? But I feel like a lot of the times it's opposite. I feel like a lot of husbands don't like making the phone calls. No, they don't like making appointments. Yeah, fair. But it's not because they don't like talking to them on the phone. They just don't want to go. because they don't want to go or whatever. I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I think we... But I think the dynamic works well. Because Carly is... Um, again, when it comes down to the confrontation and awkwardness and bluntness carly checks those boxes off it's weird because i don't like talking to people but if i have to be confrontational someone i'd rather talk to them in person than over the phone or something no no i agree with that it's weird though but i think i think we balance each other out in that sense because when carly wants to push i've cut the tension with sarcasm and that doesn't work for a lot of people though you can't do that with some people so you you sometimes like she because doesn't you're funny yeah but that's the I thing can't help it's it. like you'll get mad because i'll do it but it works and it's like you you're not mad mad but you'll be like you know you'll give me crap for it sometimes well, about, the only thing that sucks is he's so funny and so sarcastic and doesn't like being serious at all that when we do have to have a serious conversation he can't do it no, I hate and all, it. He, all he does is sit there and he goes yeah i don't know i don't know oh drives me up a wall you also suck at decision making horrible to the point where we'll be in the grocery store every question i ask him is i don't know what do you want he always answers with what do i want which is good trained because yeah i should but then don't complain but sometimes it's like just make a decision like he'll be like should we go home should we not should we keep driving around because for me i'm like josh just make the decision no because for me it's like it's not even about decision making. It's that I just, it, it, to, to be honest, it doesn't matter to me. It's like, I'll go with the flow. I'm like, you know, if you want to stay out and you want to drive around, I'm but good with that. But what if I don't know either? Then you make the decision, but you never make the decision. It, It'll be to the point where I'm like, oh, do you want, like, what do you want for lunch this week? I don't know. Okay, well, let me think about what you want for lunch now. No, because I'm, because I don't know if anybody else has this. It's like, I don't wake up in the day. The only thing I wake up and I'm like, no, I'm having that is coffee. It's like every morning I'm like, yeah, but no, that's that, not that's, a responsible adult okay. thing to do. So hold on. You have to eat three meals a day. I know. But for me, and if he, you were the one asking, I know you're pickier than me when it comes to like what you want to eat. I, you could literally say, hey, oh Josh, God. do you want chicken and rice every single day for the rest of your life for dinner? I'd say, yeah, that's fine. I don't really care. Even though I would be good with anything else. I'm not, I don't care about that. No, it's because I already have the mental load of having to figure out what's in the house how what where am i going to go get it if we don't have it and which place sells it for the cheapest is it gluten-free when i come home are we going to have all the ingredients to make the dinner like i can't just if we just didn't think about it then every single day for lunch and dinner we'd have to go to the grocery store that's not logical we have to think about what we what you would want for the week so we can get it all in one trip but i have the load too of you know taking the recycling out and the garbage give it a rest (laughs) give it a rest you know we both have equal loads that is true but it's not true at the same time no you're definitely the food decider it's not the food decider it's who else is going to go to the grocery you're the decider i'm the eater (laughs) and you're the feeder does anyone else's husband just like not know how to go grocery shopping either like oh my gosh it's actually in the mail (laughs) so if you if you want to break down the science about it we have um you don't a even genetic, know. you're a gen- making this up a, as gen- you go. a genetic so a genetic formulation that that 
is embedded in our um, data. Okay. For L- get, see see how he's talking for, in, in extra extra slow speed. This is what I deal with. I was actually just trying to come up with super uh, scientific terms to sound a lot more intelligent than my I had puny, any basis puny brain. for this point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's in our genetic mutation to be genetic bad, be mutations. Ba- be bad, oh, oh, be bad at uh, grocery shopping. I don't know what it is. Like I know exactly what I mean. Sometimes no, but majority of the time, if you go to your regular grocery store, you know what aisle to go to straight there. I don't know why. I have to send him a physical picture but of the let, item. Let's get real. For and a then sec. he'll let's say it's re- not re- there, which is sometimes true. No, 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 no. Walmart changes stuff. Time whatever. out. Time out. But there's been times where you've literally called me, like the picture stuff from Crystal Light. It was right in front of your face, and you're like showing me on FaceTime. See, it's not here. It's not here. I'm like, Josh, what is it at the bottom left corner? Oh, there it is. But. You know what I FaceTime you for? Because I need to let you know that it's truly not here. And then Wait, sometimes it is. Time out, though. It, that happened one time. No. And I was in a different no, country. No. What about the gluten-free cream of chicken soup that you couldn't find? I, that was right there. Could, the employee couldn't find it either. I found so it over FaceTime. That? No, you didn't. Apparently, I should work at the grocery store. Maybe you should. Maybe you should. I will. And I'll go there and I'll stock the shelves naked for all the men. It will be called. I'm trying to think of a clever grocery store. <laughs> no, that's actually funny. I'm not saying it. Though. Okay, go. Say Instead it. of Publix, it's called Pubix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a, you're a dumb ass, by the way. Why are you cussing? I said dumb ass. This has been a 30 minute podcast okay and doesn't matter okay so keep going anyway gosh okay get on with the program actually (laughs) what were we saying before i was really interrupted about pubics (laughs) (laughs) i don't know oh so i facetime her because a lot of times it's really just not there and remember the one time i went to walmart and i was grabbing whatever it was it was like a noodle and they i went to the spot where it was carly's like it says they have 12 in stock i was like well there's not even one here yeah whatever so it was that happens once in a while but majority no, of the time but a lot push. of the time a know, lot of times i, went, I go no, no, there no, and it's not there no, no, sh- I, I sent him yesterday to go get me tortillas at the store had to send me a photo to confirm i wanted to make sure those are the ones you wanted because if i came I home i want the cheapest tortillas I could, because i don't want to come home listen i don't want to come home and okay. then you're like, Did you see how no, it just no, took, no, no, no. I don't want to come over and you're like, just, well. See how it just took you the, 10 seconds to start your conversation? Those aren't the ones that I wanted. You just say, I don't want to come home. I don't want to come home. Like, you could have said five sentences by the time you finished one. You know, sometimes, when I, you know, sometimes when I laugh, I have that like death rattle thing. Does anybody else have that? I just did it and I was no, like. No, that's what obese people Do you hear that? Wait. Wait. It's from your genetically modified voice. <laughs> Bean. Oh. <laughs> well, I was going to call her Beans. That's her nickname. That's rude. No, he's going to call me up. I would never call you up. I'd never call you that. I've never called you that. Never will. You know why? Because that's Carly's word. That's her word that well, says, never you can names. call me any name in the whole wide world, but don't call me that. It's so degrading. What about the other one? Oh, well, that's bad too. What's worse to you? They're both pretty bad. No, no. It's not. The, I think is worse. Really? Yeah, because they use it. I've never, like, it's always to, like, either you're weak. They'll be like, oh, you're such a, like, to a man. It means you're weak. Or. Um, yeah, that's true. Or you're rude. Or they talk about, oh, that's my. So then they're sexualizing us into just some, like, some side girl. There's never, there's never a good way. Are you, can you breathe? Are you okay? What? You're like, why are you asking that? You're like, <laughs> that's I'm taking, why. I'm taking deep breaths. I don't know. I'm just, I feel, uh, I don't know. Okay. I think you made the obese comment and then it triggered <laughs> something in my, and they're like, oh yeah, you are obese. Let's make it hard to breathe right now. You're not. It's a joke. No, I am though. You're not. You're yes, not. I am. No, I you're am. not. On a BMI, I'm Give it up. Obese. No one follows BMI anymore. If you're a doctor and you follow BMI, it's dumb. Because a 200-pound guy that goes to the gym and a 200-couch potato have two different BMIs. 
Okay, so which one am I? Cause so you I can't, don't go to the gym anymore, and I well, I you do have enough love muscle storage till you're dead. That's not true. Come on. I don't know, Doctor Carly. That was a very bad take, and you know that. This is a horrible podcast. Why? Because people are just like, what? What are they listening for? They're probably. You know what? You know what? You know what I said? I said this. This podcast has become just like whatever. So. You know, it's entertaining because you never know what to expect. The next conversation could be about space. We don't know. Oh, speaking of, so Christmas is soon. And... Just no age, Rosie. On an open fire. Jack Freud. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just lost our viewership, <laughs> so that's nice. No. Honey. Okay, go ahead. Um, Christmas is soon, and on my Windsor mom group, I'm sorry if this was your daughter, but I'm going to say it because it's so sad. Um, someone posted that their kid at school had to fill out what they wanted for Christmas, a Christmas list, and her 10-year-old daughter put, I, for Christmas, I want to stop being bullied. That's what she put as her Christmas list. That's so sad. That is actually so sad. I literally read it, and I immediately, like, I had a pit in my stomach. I was ready to cry, and, like... If Lavender came home and said all she wants for Christmas is to stop being bullied, like, I literally want to cry right now. It is... I'm going to cry. It is so sad. As a parent, how do you, like... Obviously, Lavender's not that age, and it's... I just think about, you know, if if if, if my 10-year-old daughter, if any, any, old, any age daughter said that they wanted that for Christmas, or they even came home and... and, and inquired or not inquired but said they were getting bullied i just i just don't know how you as a parent don't want to go absolutely feral like i i just i would i don't know i don't know how they just don't want to lose their mind and like go to the school meet with the with the kids parents and be like man why like stop just stop it but kid sorry that's lavender playing in her activity center yeah, she loves. She, she has to pick the loudest toy right now. Yeah, she absolutely loves this thing now. What are you doing? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Surfing. Hi, honey. She loves her activity center, and she only gets it for you like might five have to minutes remove a day. The piano. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that. Um. Anyway, so it just made me think about how I already am kind of questioning if I want Lavender to go to public school, and that kind of just made it even worse for me because. <laughs> I just can't imagine every day having to worry if my kid is getting bullied at, or like worry every time there's like recess or lunchtime like oh is she sitting alone is does she have friends that's playing with her are, are there people being rude to her and it just freaks me out and I just I know I can't shelter her her whole life because it'll make it worse but my motherly instinct just wants to keep her in a bubble and just never let her go to the world but I know I have to and I don't know and now I can understand why my mom was so protective protective and, and yeah well you never yeah. understand it as a child and then you again i think every parent who was protective over their children said the same thing to their children wait until you have kids yeah, you don't true. know until you have kids and it is the truth because again you i just i just couldn't imagine getting a letter or like seeing something that my daughter wrote and not absolutely wanting to lose or my imagine mind I just, picking her up from school and she comes out crying yeah, nope. I just I'm going to jail. I just I'm going in that school and I'm going to prison after. It, yeah, it just sounds like honestly, if anybody's kid is being bullied, you have to like deal with that. I'm sorry, like it's just not an idea. And kids are I understand kids are kids and kids are mean and they're rude and they want to like hurt people's feelings and blah 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 blah, but it's like I don't know. I I really hope that if if you are going through that as a parent and your child's going through that, that like at least the school does something. But it's hard because kids don't care. Yeah, like, and sometimes it makes it worse. Because yeah, because then they're like, oh, you're a snitch. Now you're a snitch. Or, and yeah. Now, yeah. Um, but comment down below if you are homeschooled or if you went to public school and like tell me. Yeah, kind pros of and cons. Pros and cons. I've already done my research a little bit on TikTok of talking to adults that have been homeschooled and like kind of their view on it and the pros and cons. I'm more we watched for homeschooling. That, that Jubilee video too, right? They did like a homeschool versus uh I don't think, school. do we watch it? Yeah, I think we, we watched a little. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Must have the not. The fact been that I can't remember it, it probably. I feel like we never actually watched it. Shout out to Jubilee, by the way. They're sick. Yeah, they have the best really videos. They're so yeah, entertaining. Yeah. 
what a good concept to bring a group of people together and just like talk. I just, I don't know. I love that stuff. But anyway, we should probably rewatch it or do more research. Because I don't yeah. remember watching it now. I feel like we started it and then we just like didn't watch the rest. I don't know what happened. There's definitely pros and cons to both and I'm not oblivious to that, but... Um, yeah, I just, I think, I don't know, as of right now, uh, homeschooling does seem like the better option, especially the way the world's going. The thing too is I don't think that children are supposed to be sitting at a desk for like eight hours a day because as adults, if we go to, when we go to work and we're sitting, I mean, obviously they have like recess and stuff, but in high school you don't. And I feel like a lot of the time you're sitting at a desk and that like cannot be good for you physically especially as a child and like as adults we have stand-up desks and we're walking and we need to do all these things and it's so bad for us to be sitting all those times during the day but then like they have kids sit majority of their day learning and um i just feel like there's better ways to learn there's more practical ways to learn hands-on majority of children learn better hands-on than not and i think that's why a lot of people struggled in school because personally i'm not somebody who can read a textbook and then answer questions i've never been that way i need to like watch a video i need to do it i need to like something and so honestly if i didn't have to work i would 110 percent be homeschooling no matter what the only thing that is making me a little bit weary on it is like i don't know if i have the time to homeschool yeah that's true i that's, just i feel like that's everybody's caveat is like oh i'd love to homeschool my child like but we I... are busy all day morning tonight yeah like this is this podcast believe this podcast comes out today yeah and because we had no time yeah, yesterday we, like we usually film on saturdays and then sometimes like when sick doesn't come we'll maybe push it to a sunday it's tuesday and we, yeah. we couldn't we actually didn't have the time to do it saturday sunday monday yeah all week it's just been like non-stop so yeah. i'm glad we got it done though um but i think this is it for the podcast because she's, yeah. I, she's probably being loud and you guys can probably hear it and I pro it probably doesn't sound very good um so we're gonna end it here but thank you guys so much for watching if you guys like us talking by the way over on patreon we just did like asking each other hypothetical hypothetical questions and we also did a, a couples game on there where we asked each other questions kind of like what we were talking about in the beginning where we we're talking about like our weaknesses and our strengths and whatever and if you liked that kind of vibe definitely go over to patreon for five dollars you can get over like i think at this point there's like 600 posts on there i've been doing patreon for like four years now and all of the posts are there so for five dollars you can get all that and then i go live twice a week and blah 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 blah, blah. but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i know this podcast was a little bit lame but i know you guys just like to hear us talk so comment down below if you guys want us to talk about anything go over to couples in the ring at gmail.com send us topics tiktoks anything you want us to react to story times advice anything and um i love you guys so much and i'll see you in the next one bye guys